Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. CTOC warns consumers about influx of fake goods over the holiday period. Church outraged as pastor is killed in Portmore St. Catherine. And later in sports, World Cup champions Argentina arrive home to heroes welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shamela Pullen. Here are the details. The Portmore Minister's Fraternal says it is outrage following the gruesome murder of Reverend Linville Lewis Monday morning in the Sunshine City. President of the Jamaica Evangelical Alliance, Bishop Dr. Alvin Bailey, says they are shocked that such an act could be carried out against a leading man in society. We are disturbed and further um, shocked that such an incident could have taken place in Jamaica in spite of the increase in crime and violence. The pastor was shot sometime after 11 in the North 3 North community of Greater Portmore. He was shot by a gunman while he was in his motor vehicle. He was taken to hospital by a passerby. He was subsequently transferred to another hospital in the corporate area where he died while being treated. In the meantime, there is an appeal from Bishop Bailey and the police. Turn yourself into the police, you know, turn yourself into the police because God is, has seen you, he knows you, and we are praying that, you know, that you will be brought to justice, you know. We, we would like to give your life to Jesus Christ, but if, whether or not, you must face the judgment for your action. It is not a, a lonely area, it's an occupied space, and we are hoping that persons who saw will come and talk to us. We are in the initial stage of investigation, and we are hoping to make a breakthrough. But we will be doing all that we can, all that we can. The Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigations branch is again warning consumers to be on the alert during the holiday period. Persons are also being told to be mindful of what they are purchasing. Superintendent Victor Bard from CTOC was on TVJ Smile Jamaica today. The underground production of counterfeit goods is one of the largest industries in the world. By year end, it is estimated that some five trillion US dollars will be made from counterfeit goods. This is three to five percent of world trade. Superintendent Victor Bart works at the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigations branch of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Superintendent Bart says this continues to be a major problem in Jamaica, especially around the holiday periods. Counterfeit goods include car parts, shoes, toothpaste, baby formulas, and even medication, which can be lethal. From research, most of these um, counterfeit pharmaceuticals, they are attached to ED drugs. Oh. ED being? Um, erectile dysfunction drugs. Oh. So, so when you look at um, the CDC and the World Health Organization, the, the, um, the, the figures indicate that 30 to 40 percent mm -hmm. of counterfeit goods, pharmaceuticals. Are in Egypt. They don't want to go into e them. E this is like e Viagra. Viagra, the Cialis, yeah. right. They don't want to go into the store, Maybe. store, go ask. go ask. Superintendent Barrett says persons should make a report if they suspect someone is selling fake goods. Persons can go to the Consumer Affairs Commission, then to CTOC. He says an investigation will then be carried out and action taken where necessary. I'm not liable for prosecution. I mean, no, not you. No, no. Not the store owner. The would store be. owner, right? Because um, oftentimes they tell you that they don't know what they're what they're selling. Mm -hmm. But just look at it. You have a, a store with a warehouse with five thousand pair of shoes. It can be for your personal use. And based on our current legislation, we, we don't. You don't have to be selling. Once you have those goods in your possession, you have to declare under, the, under the law, we can prosecute you. But to safeguard yourself, Superintendent Barrett outlined some signs persons can look out for when purchasing items. The pricing. If it is too good to be true, think twice. Look at the smelling, the packaging, the spelling. Right? It is very important. And just, I mean, save your money and probably go to the, most, um, the more notable instit um, institutional establishments 
and, and buy, buy the goods. Are we what you can afford? Are, are we what you can but afford? That is, that <laughs> is what it. You can afford. I yeah. want to know what your shoe is supposed to smell. I mean, I guess shoes have a smell. Eh? Yeah, you can smell you... the dye. The dye, the, you know, the, oh. I mean, and even the, the component parts that, that make up the shoe. Okay. You, you can smell it. You, you, I mean, sometimes they have some strong odor. Oh. You know that the shoes, I mean, is wrong, 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 wrong. Okay. The University of the West Indies is looking to improve surgical care in Jamaica. Recently, they did a launch to raise three million U.S. dollars to start an endowment fund for the initiative. More in this report. At present, the Minister of Health is trying to clear a backlog of over 700 surgeries through its school care program. Many Jamaicans have been suffering the long way to have surgical procedures done. But it's not just a problem in Jamaica. Professor Joseph Plummer is head of the Department of Surgery, Radiology, Anesthesia and Intensive Care in the Faculty of Medical Sciences at the University of the West Indies. Professor Plummer says studies have shown that a third of all diseases globally is surgical diseases. This includes cancers and cardiovascular diseases. 85% of the world's population live in low and middle income countries. Only 10% of surgeries occur in low and middle income countries. Not only that, but there's also a change in epidemiology of diseases where there are some, for example, cancers, they're overtaking cardiovascular disease as the most common cause of death. And already in the Americas, including Jamaica, um, cancers actually account for a higher burden of disease. And low and middle income countries are impacted the most. As a matter of fact, Professor Plummer says the need for a specialist care in Jamaica has been increasing in recent years. And a good example of this is actually stage one colorectal cancer, where in our population, if you are diagnosed with stage one colorectal cancer, which is a purely surgical disease, at five years you have about a 70% chance of being alive which is compared to North America, where that same stage one colorectal cancer in their hands, it's at 90% five year survival. So there is no doubt that there's a need for an improvement in quality. And so the University of the West Indies, Mona, is on a drive to raise three million US dollars to start an endowment fund in honor of Professor Sir John Golding, with the hope of improving surgical health care across the nation, especially at the University Hospital of the West Indies. The endowed chair in surgical leadership and education will not only bring revenue to the university and particularly the Mona campus. But as we have shown, the Mona campus is the main professional institution for providing high-level medical doctors for Jamaica and the region. This chair will allow for better planning of manpower needs of all disciplines of surgery. The UWI has a solid name for training undergraduates, and the MBBS degree has a strong name brand. But the UE is now targeting one million US dollars, which it will place in a restricted endowment fund. It is hoped that this will generate enough profit, at least five million Jamaican dollars annually, to fund research, projects, and workshops. Residents in West Bay St. Catherine staged a peaceful protest over poor road conditions. They say the damaged roads were left behind by the National Water Commission after fixing a sewage collapsed. Cody and Barrett reports. Residents of West Bay and St. Catherine say they've had enough of damages to their vehicles and dust nuisance from traversing a roadway dug up for repairs but not resurfaced. Water Commission have dug up the road, so we need the road to be fixed because it um, damaged up the people them vehicle, causing chaos in the community. Um, when the rain fall, it caused flood in the people them yard, muddy and dusty, and the neighbors are been complaining. So we need justice to get the road to be done. It's understood that in November 2021, the National Water Commission, NWC, had two major sewage collapse in the Portsmouth area, which were repaired. However, the roadway was not resurfaced. Both the councillor caretaker for the Edge Water Division, Raymond de Jack, and the Member of Parliament for Southeastern St. Catherine, Robert Miller, have written tirelessly to the NWC about the situation. It has fallen on deaf ears and to for almost two years now, there's no remedy to the situation. So we have no alternative more than to stage a peaceful 
demonstration because we need and the residents need the road to be fixed. I've written to the regional director here in St. Catherine in charge of sewage. I've written to the president of National Water Commission. I've written to the chairman of National Water Commission. I'm in the process now of writing to the minister in charge of water because the citizens deserve better services from our state agent. And we are imploring the power of B, the power that be. And since then, they have gotten no response. They are calling on senior management or the overseeing ministry to step in and ensure that the NWC returns to the area and resurface the roads. In addition, Mr. Miller said debris was moved by contractors to another area that has clogged drains. So whenever it rains, persons cannot stand under the bus stop because there's a puddle of water there. And we're asking them to come and rectify those situations. I'm getting the bad name as a member of parliament. I'm playing my part. So we just want Water Commission to partner with us to ensure that the citizens live in comfort and enjoy their surrounding. He admits that an area in Coral Way was being worked on, but it was not done properly and work ended abruptly. Our news team tried to contact the National Water Commission, but up to news time, we did not get a response. Kodian Barrett, TVJ News. A gesture from the St. Andrew South Police Division is helping to strengthen the community relationship with residents. On Monday, Commanding Officer Senior Superintendent Kirk Ricketts and his team presented a sewing machine to a community dressmaker, Rosemary Holness. I make cushions, pillars, runners. I don't go into garment yet, but soon because this machine is going to make me make garment now. You understand? But having the, the, this, it, it kind of slow me down, but having a new one now, it's going to make me make production. I can open a business for myself, can have my own business account and get, you know, stuff coming in, right? And this is a Merry Christmas for me early. Superintendent Ricketts says he's thrilled that people in the division can see police officers in a different light and not just the security officers who enforce the law. We current to police in, 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 in very hard communities within the St. Andrew South space, communities that are really characterized by gangs and gang members, guns, gunmen, and wanted persons. But one thing I, I always try to tell my police officers that over 90% of, the, of the, 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 the residents who live within these hard communities are decent, law-abiding citizens. And as such, you know, this is just one of the, the citizens that we would have singled out to show our, you know, our commitment, uh, our love for the people of St. Andrew South. SSP Record says this is not a new initiative, but part of a continued community outreach program. He said a Christmas street will also be held at the Hunts Bay Police Station later this week. It's now time for the Business Minute. In the world of business, the Bank of Jamaica, BOJ, says the total currency in circulation during December 2022 is expected to amount to $227.6 billion. The projected currency stock represents annual nominal growth of 0.3% compared with 19.1% for the corresponding reference period of 2021. In a media statement, the BOJ said the forecast is approximately $21.5 billion or 10.4% higher than the $206.1 billion in circulation at the end of November 2022, but is below the five-year average growth rate of 15.2% for December. In business overseas, Sam Bankman Fried, the boss of the failed cryptocurrency exchange FTX, has agreed to be extradited to the United States to face charges. The 30-year-old who lives in the Bahamas has been accused of committing one of the biggest financial frauds in U.S. history. FTX has filed for bankruptcy, leaving many people unable to withdraw funds. According to a court filing, FTX owed its 50 largest creditors almost 3.1 billion U.S. dollars. That's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. Now for a look at the top regional and international stories.
In the region, Grenada's Agriculture and Lands Minister, Senator Adrian Thomas, stated on Monday that by December next year, the government intends to introduce a legislation to legalize ganja for medicinal use. Senator Thomas says there will be extensive consultation with the general public involving education programs so people will understand what the industry is all about. However, smoking in public spaces is prohibited and anyone caught using marijuana or smoking in a public place will be charged with an offense and is subject to a fine. On the international scene, in the United States, the controversial immigration policy of the Trump era, Title 42, is still in effect for now. The policy was set to end on December 21, but the Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts placed a temporary hold on his termination on Monday. The Republican-led states filed an emergency appeal to keep it in place, but Chief Justice Roberts wants a response from the Biden administration by Tuesday evening. Title 42 allows the government to swiftly expel migrants at the border. With its ending, border communities are bracing for a surge in migrant arrivals. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report with Jermaine Brown.